Hi, I'm Mel Nichols. I'm president of New York State Chapter of the American Chestnut Foundation. And I get a lot of questions about tree tubes and what or tree protectors and stuff. So I just wanted to go through a, a couple little things that I have here today. Um, one of the things is if, if you're planting a lot of trees, then sometimes tree tubes, um, they work good. They're pretty easy to, to use rather than build a wire enclosure. So I'm just going to show you a couple um, types that I've used, a couple of them that seem to work good. Um, got this one here, and, and I'd have to get, you had to get back to me. I don't have the names of, of the brand on what just what these are right here now. But one of the things is I do like is some of them have releasable ties on here. And if you're using zip ties, use black ones. They're ultraviolet resistant, um, so they won't break down with sunlight. But if you're using a tree tube, you need to um, have a good stake because the uh, tree is going to be flopsy and it, until it gets out of the top of the tube um, it's going to have to take a couple years after it gets out of the top until it gets um, strong enough to support itself. These seedlings down through here I planted last fall I direct planted them um, and the reason I have so many of them close together is I plan on grafting onto these root stocks on these on these little seedlings here um, with blight resistant material just to ramp up production of, of um, either stuff for grafting or for pollen production um, to distribute to members. So this, this little tree tube here, I'm going to take it off and if you look, um, you look at this seedling, okay this is seedling from last, this would have been a direct planted and you can see how floppy it is. It wouldn't start to support itself right here now but it's growing good and it's about three feet tall so it, it's got some pretty good growth and I have to say that also all these have a little bit of brown leaves down on the bottom uh, they come out early this spring and we had a real late frost here and even in the tree tubes every single one of these little ones um, when they'd come up they got frosted back and so they had to recover so if they hadn't had a frost they would have probably been you know at least another six inches to a foot higher than they are now so that's this tree tube type here I have another um, I have another type down here that's pretty secure they're pretty pretty rugged and, and quite stiff so they hold up um, they hold up good in this tree tube here same thing with a releasable uh, tie on to it and if you look at this one here you'll see that that tree um, that little seed right there is, you know, probably three feet tall. It's grown, got really good growth onto it, and um, and that's from direct planting in the fall. And I will, um, I'm going to make a couple more videos, one on how I transplant, and another one on direct planting. So that's. Um, if you have any questions, you can um, give me a call or email me. Um, I think it's both on my website and stuff there for the New York State chapter at the Chestnut Foundation. Um, the American Chestnut Foundation website and go to the New York State chapter and you can get my information on there. So if you have any questions, uh, you know, get in contact with me. These other trees behind me here are larger, older. Um, they're about six years old now. Um, they have been frosted off is the reason why they're so bushy also because um, they've got multiple stems onto them. But I'm leaving that way because it's going to be much easier for me to pollinate the nuts or bag the flowers or collect pollen rather than if it was a nice straight tree that was real tall. So, so that's, that's about it, I, what I have on tree tubes here. Thank you very much.